How's that? Is this just wrong? That's wrong. You can't yeah. tuck I'm not, it in. You I'm not that guy. I saw that guy in a restaurant recently, though. No. And and people were making fun of him. I was like, come on. He was eating like pancakes or something. It wasn't even like worth it, like lobster. Well, we are far from pancakes. Yes, this is the Chilean sea bass with uh, lemon. It's a lemon crusted sea yeah. bass. That's what it is. Crispy artichokes on the side. And what's great about it is that we can have you can have it gluten free because I have celiac disease, so I can't have any gluten. Normally, you go to a restaurant and just having that celiac disease it mm -hmm. cuts the menu in half. Of course. You know, but here I would say 90, 95 percent of the things you can have gluten free. We want to be a neighborhood restaurant that you can count on for consistently great food and a great atmosphere and prices that don't smoke your wallet. I don't want to be that once a year fancy uptight place. And Malik, what brought you first here? Mm-hmm. He's like, you gotta ask me when I put something in my mouth. <laughs> the oh, truth brother comes hungry. out. Brother ain't got no food in the house. That's right, all is mine. <laughs> Y'all just keep talking. <laughs> Well, I've known Michelle a long time. We go back to the early 90s. She used to work yeah. at a um, coffee shop in Union Square, which Maxwell worked there, and Shamar Moore, and mm -hmm. I man back in the day, Russell Simmons used to always be in there, and Golden Brooks from, from um, Girlfriends, Girlfriends worked there. Um, quite a few people did. And um, I used to perform there on Sunday nights. So I've known Michelle a long time. You have a business of your own and you have a family at the same time, so is that tough, juggling all these things? The best part about it is it's all in the West Village. I live in the West Village, okay. schools in the West Village, restaurant, I'm kind of running around in the same place. Her kids are back there cooking, <laughs> and they're only three and seven. Child labor at its finest. <laughs> My partner, Joey, he has a son as well. He has an eight-year-old, and there's a drink named after him, the Jagger. So then, of course, I had to have a drink named after my son, okay. Luca. So it's the Luca's Ice Latte. The Luca's so Ice Latte. keep it all in the family. It's definitely kind of the place that you, you can come to and the food's going to taste the same and be as delicious. And let me tell you, it is delicious. <laughs> I'm savoring over this sauce Let's over here. Let's put that this in right now. Phenomenal. That's the hanger stick. People come here, they have fun. And, and that's it's a real neighborhood too. joint, yeah, It's a real neighborhood yeah. place. I've kind of had a long retention with our staff, too, so mm -hmm. we have a lot of regulars. How do you feel about people in your plate? <laughs> that's right, you can dig in. I can? As long as I can dig into yours. Go for it, let me try that. All right, go ahead. You can just take the whole yeah. piece. All right. There you go. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. See? And you have the mahi mahi. I have right? grilled mahi mahi. Comes okay. on a bed of tomato cup with some arugula, and it's just very clean. Go for it. Simple, classic dish. And you've been chomping on these fries ever since we walked in here. I have been. <laughs> no, you know what's up. No matter if you come breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you have to have the fries. And it comes with a gorgonzola fondue. Okay. You can appreciate the whole restaurant business because you own a restaurant yourself. Not only did I own a restaurant, I used to work in a restaurant. I started out as a busboy and became a waiter and. Um, when I was 19, I said, I want to have my own restaurant. And at 29, I did. I used to run around town talking about this restaurant I was going to open. And there was a young man I knew who would say, um, now how does it open a restaurant? And I was like, man, if I thought about that, I wouldn't do it. And on opening night of my restaurant, somehow he made it there. He did. And I hadn't seen him in a few years. And he comes up to me and goes, hey, man, remember me? Mr. Doubtful, you did it. A few years later, he opened his own restaurant. He did, too. Ah, oh, he inspired it. <laughs> So you're that type of person that if someone tells you you can't do something that pushes you yeah, to do it? The only thing I think I really can't do is become a white man and fly. <laughs> like flapping my arms. Yeah, you can't do that. I don't that, think I can do that. Like Birdman. You definitely can't do that. <laughs> so I think that you can't be limited by what other people think is possible for you. What inspired you to become an actor? I was um, about four years old and my mother took me to see Alice in Wonderland. I was on stage and just thought, Whatever that is, I want to do it. I didn't know what it was. I just knew that I wanted to be part of the show. Growing up in New York, then that was the 70s. I just did theater as a kid. In fact, not far from here, on Bank Street, is HB Studios, which I went when I was like 16. At this point in life, it's more important to make sure that my voice is heard from a creative standpoint as a writer, a film, a theater project. Harlem to Hollywood is my life story, told on stage. There's a lot of things that are universal in your themes. In fact, I was in this restaurant last week meeting with a team around a film I'm going to be directing that centers around food. So as a director, you're in charge of what's going on in a production. You're sort of the same way as the owner of your restaurant. How did it all come together? I've done every job. I was a waitress, I was a hostess, I was a bartender, I tables, whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. I want the customer to walk in and be greeted right away, be taken care of. It just has to be a seamless experience. Mm -hmm. Are you going to eat those? Have some. Those, Those are lobster tacos. Those are lobster tacos. Tacos de langosta. Buen provecho. Gracias. 
They're not off. Mm-hmm. Let's see if you can keep it in that shell when you take a bite. Let's see what happens. Ah, good luck. <laughs> Go. Mmm. That's good, right? That's good. Nice, right? Mm-mm. This is why you like coming here. <laughs> food and the people vibes. You know, we have a lot of seafood oh, on the menu. It's Mediterranean. Mm. Even the name Extra Virgin came from thinking about Joey's ingredients. Mm. Get that, baby. Get it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you know how to talk, mm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speak to me and mm. How's that, though? Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you. It's been a delicious experience. Malik, good choice. I'm going to continue with my taco. There you go. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>